Okay. Okay. So this is a very, very, very controversial topic. Whenever you deal with elephants, specifically big ones, that have been hunted, there is a lot of emotion, there's a lot of controversy. I haven't really made many notes for what I'm about to say, but it comes from all the research that I've done pretty much over the last 18 months around this topic. And there's certain specific notes, certain specific words that are constantly used in this debate that I'm open to, to discuss. And if you have additional information that I should know about, I want to know about it. I'm a scientist at heart, okay? So what are we talking about? Very controversially, two big tuskers were killed in Tanzania. And the most controversial part about them is that they were hunted right near the border of Kenya. Uh, that is very close proximity to a game reserve called Amboseli in Kenya that generates phenomenal amount of money from a photographic tourism perspective for elephants. So I think it's appropriate for me to say right off the bat that I am a huge proponent of ecotourism as well as hunting that sustains wildlife and protects the habitats that are critically needed for wildlife all over the world, but more specifically in Africa. I am strongly in support of areas being totally photographic because they generate the most money for wildlife conservation and hunting should not be a part of that. I'm also strongly supportive of areas that are hunted, that no ecotourism will ever flourish or be financially viable, nor will a photographic person want to step foot in those areas. Those areas work very harmoniously together. They go side by side, doing the same thing, supporting wildlife, and supporting and protecting the habitat that are critical for wildlife to survive. So the last thing I will say about the specific issue between Tanzania and Kenya is this. There has been considered back in the day when this same situation happened in 95, 96 to establish an MOU and an MOA between Kenya and Tanzania to say, listen, we have a population of elephants that are phenomenally good for ecotourism. That population needs protecting. And so can we institute some sort of buffer around Amboseli and those elephants to give them as good a chance as possible to reach the age in which they look and act like super tuskers that will generate a lot of ecotourism money and protect them from hunting? I'm all for that. I think that's a great idea. I'm also all for the idea of ecotourism saying we have elephant X, we have lion Y, and those animals specifically, and the ecotourism operators would totally agree with me here, those specific animals are the animals that generate 90% of the income. Those animals are off limits. They should be off limits. That's the harmony that happens between ecotourism, photographics, and hunters. What I am not saying is for all of that wildlife to be off limits. Hunting quotas are very, very, very minimal. You're talking about less than a percent, often 0.1% of the elephant population in the area. So the impact to the population is negligible. But specific animals that can be identified very easily, they should be off limits. So I lied. I'll say one more thing about this whole situation. That was language put into some articles that gave it a little bit more substance and outrage, which was the fact that these elephant carcasses were burnt. For the vast majority in Africa, all of the elephant meat is typically given to communities and utilized. In this area of Tanzania, northern Maasai land, the tribesmen do not eat elephant, so you can't give it away. They are cattle people and fiercely protective of their cattle. So you cannot leave a carcass because there is the potential, not that it's going to happen, but there's a potential of that carcass getting poisoned, attracting lions, leopards, and hyenas, and a bunch of predators 
being poisoned to protect cattle. That's why they burn the carcass. Burn the carcass, there's no opportunity, if it happened, for poisoning to occur and take out predators in the area. So now I wanna to talk to the three sort of pillars of the argument that are constantly talked about, constantly. You see it in every single comment. I respond to this kind of comment all the time. I can break it down into three parts. The first part is the idea that there's only 40 to 50 to 100 super tuskers left. That idea is framed up in the fact that those super tuskers are genetically superior or that genes, the genetics, are causing super tuskers to occur. My only data source to say I don't think it's purely genetics is the largest data set that we have on elephants coming out of Kruger Park. This is the Ian White and Hall Martin data set, 1600, 1660 odd elephants. And there is a strong correlation between tusk weight and tusk length tied to age. Not saying that genetics don't play a role, not saying that climate doesn't play a role, not saying that fighting and breaking tusks doesn't play a role. I've not seen any signs behind the genetics to say it's genetics that are driving super tuskers to be super tuskers. But let's make the assumption that it is. It is common knowledge in the scientific literature that male elephants become fecund, i.e. reproductively mature and successful starting in around age 35. The average elephant age class upon death is going to be 48 to 55. So if it is genetics, you want those breeding bulls, those breeding males to produce offspring, to reproduce as much as they possibly can in their lifetime. I think everybody would agree with me there. From 35 to 55 is 20 years. So here is the question. Would you prefer hunters to hunt elephants in a 35 to 40 year age class, wherein their tusks based on White and Hall Martin's data are small and they only breed one to five years, or hunt them when they're between the 50 and 55 year age class, when their tusks are big and they've already bred for 15 to 18 plus years. It's a ratio game, right? How many years of breeding to how many years left on life to potentially put more genetic material into the system. You tell me. And here's something else that is often portrayed over social media and comments. Genetic material does not change. If you're breeding at 35 and you're breeding at 52, it is the exact same genetic material going into the offspring. Exactly the same. The science shows that older bulls, older males, do have higher reproductive success. The Ambicelli science that's coming out of Poole and Hollister is great science. It's really, really good. And it shows, yes, higher reproductive success as you go through the age classes, as you get older and older, and a modest decline towards the very end of life. Again, the crux of the matter, I think, comes down to this, right? Are you okay with elephants being hunted? Because if you're not, then there's nothing I can say. I'm okay with elephants being hunted. Very few elephants, negligible impact to the population. And so then I have to ask the question, which elephants should you hunt? Should you hunt the 35 to 40 year old age class? Small tusks, low breeding opportunity to put their genetic material into the population, or the 50 to 55 year old age class? where they've had a ton of breeding opportunity to put their genetic material into the population, but have large tusks, even super tusks. If anything that I have said is flawed in terms of its logic, let me know. I, I, I even would love for you to come on a podcast and give me the data, give me the science, or tell me where my logic and my reasoning are wrong. Because I think at the end of the day, the logic and reasoning if you hate hunting and want wildlife and habitat and more elephants in the future, my vision, my goal is exactly what you want, right? So I think the best, absolute best solution for elephant conservation is this. The money that's brought in by hunting elephants in the 48 
to 55 year old age class, maximizes breeding opportunity to put that genetic material into the population if you believe genetics are what is causing super tuskers. Very few are being taken, but let's layer on to the fact that there may be certain elephants in certain places that drive a phenomenal amount of money from a photographic perspective for wildlife conservation. And those elephants should be identified and everybody, both hunting operators and ecotourism should get on the same page and go, those elephants are off limits. Again, please reach out to me. If you feel like I said something wrong or my logic is flawed or I haven't got the right science and I need it, please send it to us. I'm not hard to find. And I hope you just take a step back. And I think if you're on the pro hunting side or you're the against the hunting side, that you'd realize that we're all in it for the same reasons. We all want what's best for wildlife, for its conservation, for the habitat protection that they need. We just have two different mechanisms that actually work harmoniously together when done correctly for what we both want. <clears throat> And that's it. Reach out to me. I'd love to have conversations. You know it. I'd love to have discussions.